on to the finals. We don't know their opponent yet. That second match will be after this one. So let's start top four. Montana leading the Shadow Rider and Incineroar compared to Urshifu Rapid Strike and Raging Bolt for Adi. Very different thoughts going into this very first match of things. Incineroar can, of course, offer that Fatal Pressure onto this turn, and it will be Intimidate down onto the Urshifu it does, if it does want to go for something like the Close Combat instead of that Surging Strikes. Of course, Surging Strikes very tempting when you are staring down an Incineroar and a Calyrex, considering the Incineroar will take that super effective. Calyrex doesn't, definitely doesn't feel safe in this situation whatsoever, and of course, when you're staring down an Assault Vest Raging Bolt onto the other end, you wouldn't be doing the most amount of damage, and you could be at risk for losing that on the first turn. We'll see what happens here. Montana feeling on the back foot, at least, with this Calyrex Shadow Rider. But Fake Out goes towards the Urshifu slot, stopping Urshifu from attacking this turn. The Astro Barrage hitting into both of Adi's Pokemon. The follow-up damage from Fake Out Astro Barrage takes out Urshifu. Adi loses his Pokemon on turn one, and Calyrex gets a Grim Name boost to its special attack. It's going to do even more damage next turn. The Electro Web does land, crucially, onto both of Montana's Pokemon, lowering their speeds by one stage. Being able to stop their Urshifu in its tracks, make sure no fake out, so nice. But we got to talk about that Electro Web and that speed drop over onto the Calyrex on the opposing end. Now that Adi's own Calyrex joins the field because now you pressure a lot into the Calyrex over onto the opposing end. You are now 100% going to be faster. You do not have to worry about the speed ties coming on through, depending on how things are trained. And it's going to be a way better situation going on forward. And Ghost does hit super effective in the Ghost, so you put off with a lot of pressure, even if there is the terrestrialization. Yeah, sometimes that's the best way to deal with some of the most prominent Pokemon in the metagame is they're often weak to their own typing, like those Ghost types here. So Clefairy will swap into the Raging Bolt slot, activating that Friend Guard ability, making sure that Calyrex Shadow Rider on Adi's end takes a little bit less damage <laughs> every turn. Montana says, great idea, might I join in? We got two Clefairies that It's like we're playing Pokemon Stadium minigames again. And with the friend guard coming on in and the terrestrialization as well, dropping that ghost type weakness going on into this match and having a little bit more of extra help with the friend guard reducing the amount of damage coming on through. So both trainers swapping in Clefairy. Not surprised to see both trainers as well going for the terrestrialization. A, a true anything you can do, I can do better type of situation. <laughs> yeah, at least we do know that Adi's Shadow Rider will outspeed because Montana's got hit by the Electroweb the last turn, and he decides to calm mind instead of going for damage boosting up Shadow Rider's special attack and special defense by one stage each. But remember, Montana already has a special attack boost thanks to the Grim Nay activating the prior turn. That's a plus one. Ash Barrage, Clefairy hanging on with nine HP. The Clefairy just hanging on to the friend guard will be sticking around for one more turn. And now the Calyrex on Audi's end joins Montana's and having a special attack boost. So that's so cool and dandy. But as well, that special defense, that's going to be helping going on forward in the match when you're staring down against this Calyrex, as well as your own survivability. One of the big differences in how these two Calyrex are built out. You do have to be careful and looking ahead at this, both trainers with these Clefairies well, what's the point of a redirection, really, if it's going to be an Astro Barrage? That is a spread damage move. And Montana, since Clefairy does have full health at this point, it's going to be something that would be a little bit more difficult to take care of, especially since, assuming they're kind of similar, it wouldn't be taken down. But a helping hand is a definitely a way to maximize this potential. Yeah, not only are you plus one special attack, but now the Clefairy lending a helping hand means that Montana's, uh, uh, excuse me, Montana's Shadow Rider is going to do even more damage. But here's a Terra Fairy drain kits hardly doing that much you will get a little bit of recovery but we'll see if the uh, friend guard can help keep it around that's a nice little chunk considering 75 percent of the health is going to be restored and when you're staring down this helping hand plus one ashra barrage any health is going to be helping you in this situation protect over onto the clefairy and it's going to be a calyrex that is hanging on through this turn that was everything that little bit of health the only reason this restricted is still kicking around yeah, so crucial little bits of recovery from the Draining Kiss was enough to keep it around. You still have the speed boost, but Clefairy's full HP. Calyrex on Montana's side, you saw it didn't take too much damage from uh, that. So Montana has the Pokemon advantage as well, and his Pokemon are still healthier than Adi's. Knowing that you still have the speed, though, this is where you can be trying to go for a power move. When you're staring down the Calyrex on the opposing end, and the amount of damage an Astro Barrage can do, it can be huge. And 
looking at where we're eyeing up as well. I mean, if we are looking at maybe just a, uh, a draining kiss coming out from Montana's end, this protect then would make sense. Make sure this Calyrex is safe past this turn. Not the only protect coming on through, though. Yeah, Clefairy is going to protect itself from any damage on Adi's end, but we know since his Shadow Rider protected, you know, there's not going to be any big threats. Astro, Astro Barrage will be able to KO Clefairy on Adi's side. So now Adi's down to his final two Pokemon here in game one. It's a four to two Pokemon count, and Montana hasn't even shown its fourth Pokemon and has two Grim Nabus. Still, when you're looking at the Calyrex at this half health and the plus one from the Calyrex over on Audi's end, you still can get pressured here. It is going to be for the final Pokemon, that Raging Bolt making a reappearance and does have a damage axe as well going on into this. Clefairy still at full health. And at this point, Montana still hasn't revealed his fourth and final Pokemon. So a lot of momentum, even when you're staring down this Calyrex that has more so speed on its end, it's still something that doesn't feel so great. If you can make it past these two Pokemon, there's still a Cinderor, still a fourth Pokemon in the back. Yeah, I'm sure that Incineroar is probably going to be able to, you know, take take a couple hits, maybe uh, hurt what Raging Bolt can do. So obviously Montana has a lot of momentum on his side right now. The last couple of turns have really gone in his favor. Even without getting the knockout on Adi's Shadow Rider earlier, he still is pretty strong. He will swap out his Calyrex Shadow Rider to reset that speed drop from before. Montana revealing Rillaboom as the fourth Pokemon in this game one. Thunderclap is gonna fail since Rillaboom switches into that slot, so a great switch from Montana. But Astro Barrage with the Combine boost, it's gonna hit both of Montana's Pokemon, bring the Fairy down under half, but not even doing half to this Assault Vest Rillaboom. And then the Heal Pulse is gonna bring Rillaboom all the way back up. I mean, looking at this Clefairy, I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, follow me here on this turret, no attacking moves, and it has only Heal Pulse as a way of a Viable thing you could be doing on this turn, making sure this Rillaboom is back up to full on this swap in. Assault Vest as well. Didn't really take the most damage going on into this anyways. And the swap out coming out from Montana, sure. You do lose your Grim Nade boost, but you now do have an opportunity to first off hit a priority move into the Calyrex Shadow Rider, as well the swap out when you do hit the field back again. Your speed is now going to be reset. You're no longer going to be at that negative one from that very first turn of battle where we saw the Raging Bolt make an appearance the first time around. You do are in a weird situation now with needing to just deal with this Rillaboom. And the Rillaboom, when you do have these grassy glides that can hit in to the Pokemon on the other end, definitely wouldn't appreciate it. But Assault Vest, you still still have hit so well in the meantime. Montana nodding his head, respecting the protect from Coward Shadow Rider on Adi's side. Clefairy will protect as well. It's the second time that Clefairy is protected when Shadow Rider protected. The grassy glide goes into that protect, though, so no damage will be put from Montana's side of the field here on the turn. And Electro Web does go in, or does go into the Protect and lands onto Rillaboom, lowering its speed. Now you have a weird spot. Critical hit didn't really help. Uh, too much damage there. But both Grassy Glide and Thunderclap are plus one priority, and Rillaboom is slower now. Yeah, but you're still looking at a Thunderclap into an Assault Vest Rillaboom, and you already saw how little the damage did on that turnaround, so. You, you lowered... Well, Draco Meteor would do a lot, and you have speed. You'd have to hit the double protect on that one, and it's still an <laughs> Assault Vest Rillaboom that can still offer so much pressure on this turn. So definitely a little bit of a tough spot. Really showcasing, I think, a couple of the difficulties with the Shadow Rider in the format with the priority moves that we get to see around here. There's a lot of ways of kind of slowing or stopping the priority. And getting at this point in the match, not really having a way to be slowing or stopping the priority from the end, a little difficult, but here we go. Let's see if a double protect be enough. Yeah, Adi's gonna go for it. 30% chance to get the double protect, and it doesn't happen. Calyrex fails at double protect. Grassy God goes into that slot, knocking it out, and now it is Raging Bolt versus four Pokemon on the other side. This is one of the things that helped Montana getting rid of her Shifu on turn one, knocking it out, meant that he had the, the was losing that Pokemon uh, disadvantage and he was not able to switch out, really didn't have any damage left on the team. Draco, Meteor also doesn't even do half to Rillaboom them because of Assault Vest, so really tough spot. Uh, Montana, up four to one, he's gonna be able to win this first game. I would like to try to build some suspense here. Like, can this Raging Bolt, the super powerful paradox, take on the world, but it's just not meant for this world. It's like when you know the ending of the movie already because it was so obvious halfway through Thunderbolt. Not gonna do much. 
Yeah, the wood hammer will be uh, grass boosted, grassy terrain boosted on this turn. So it's, it's resisted, but every little bit helps. I know it might, might take a little bit longer to, <laughs> for this game uh, because you have the leftovers recovery and it's not like a fairy does any damage, right? Yeah, no, the Clover doesn't do much, but at this point, the towel will be thrown in and be talking about the next game situation. And it could fare well into the other Pokemon around. Yeah, definitely. We'll see if Urshifu does, fares better in game two, but it's not going to be in the lead this time. Clefairy and Calyrex Shadow Rider for Adi compared to the Shadow Rider and Rillaboom on Mantana's side. I mean, this makes a lot of sense because the Rillaboom was really strong at the end of the last game. It's like, hey, I might as well just start stronger at the beginning of game two. And when you have the Assault Vest and you're staring down this Pokemon, there's still a, bit, a lot of damage that could be coming out over on your end. And when you, at least you do have the Clefairy that's next to you for that friend guard. And we might be eyeing up your favorite move here, which would be so sick. But the Rillaboom, you have to be careful about the fake out in to the Clefairy as well. At least if that is happening, you know there isn't going to be a powerful attack heading your way. No swaps from either trainer. That means they are committed to the Pokemon on the field to do damage right now. Adi deciding to terrestrialize his Calyrex Shadow Rider into a fairy type, getting rid of that ghost weakness. And Montana saying, hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to match it, turning into Terra Fairy as well. So usually Astro Barrage should be the Shadow Rider co uh, counter, but you're not even going to do that much damage. This isn't the trainer's first rodeo. It's their second. They know that they have to be terrestrializing those Pokemon from the get-go to not lose them. And it's going to be a calm mind to kick it off. Might be the uh, difference between rode Rodeo and Rodeo, you know, but a uh, nasty plot from Calyrex is going to boost his special attack by two stages that, as if he's already gotten two KOs. That's how much damage it's going to do when it's able to attack. Terror, or excuse me, the grassy terrain boosted wood hammer does half of his HP. And the thing is 55% accurate, but Calyrex dodges it from Clefairy. That is so brutal. If that landed, that could have been huge. It definitely could. That would have been momentum changing right from the get-go in this match. And the amount of damage that you've taken on your Calyrex definitely doesn't fare well. With the grassy train recovery and thanks to the friend guard, does look like you, it's a little dicey for another bit of a turn, but it is possible. You are also next to a Pokemon that does have that follow me and you did drop your ghost type weakness and you do have a special defense boost. So can try with that friend guard to be taking a round of Afrobrod from the Calyrex opposed you. Except it's having a nasty plot. So you are kind of just donezo from that amount of damage. It was important to not play passive on that turn, but you're still in a rough situation. We might go down to how these Pokemon are trained and all the defensive and hope to get the speed tie. Well, Fairy said, I'm not gonna sing, I'm gonna clap this time, helping hand to boost Adi's damage from his Calyrex, but Montana protecting smartly so he doesn't take any damage from this Astro Barrage. Then the Rillaboom has Assault Vest, so that is, means it's going to take a little bit less damage from these special attacks. But how much? The answer oh. is the Assault Vest doesn't help too much. It does crucially help enough to keep Rillaboom around in the red and click U-turn to bring something else in for Montana. And when you're looking at Pokemon from the back, if we are looking at Calyrex, that is, hey, which one is going to be faster? Montana, with this Tornadus adjustment, or even if it was for Pokemon, I don't know, but even with this Tornadus, now you do not have to play that game. You can just click a Tailwind and Astral Barrage on this turn, and really, what is are you going to say? No. You can't go for the Protect and go for a Swap or a Hail Mary with the Clefairy. But it's still, when you're staring down this plus two, a really, really dangerous situation. The plus two, Calyrex, especially with the spell tag. So you already had an additional boost to your damage. It's so much. Yeah, and with Clefairy leaving the field, that does take the friend guard with it. So the damage mitigation has left meaning that Adi would have to take the full front of this Astro Barrage. Incineroar swapped into that slot as a dark type would resist Astro Barrage. So uh, even with the Nasty Plot boost, that's still the best option for Adi since it'll do less damage. Astro Barrage doesn't hit Calyrex and it will land into this Incineroar on the swap in. So how much can Incineroar take? Looks like it's barely not enough for a two hit KO. Definitely helps when it's a resisted hit and this uh... This cat definitely has a little bit of bulk to it. And you do now, since the terrestrialization has been spent on both ends of the board, have access to the fake out into the normal ghost type Pokemon. If now drop that immunity, you do have an option to stop it on its turn. And with that as well, even if there is the protect coming out from Montana, when you're staring down the tornadoes on the opposing end, it doesn't have that protect. You do have the plus one and you do have a potential draining kiss to try and recover some of your health back 
to help with that longevity going on into the match. Yeah, this is a spot that I think Adi, with his incinerator on the field, this is really a, a different for him because before we had the Clefairy on the field, and it's like it's not doing, it's not providing a lot of pressure, but at least Incineroar has some utility here. can go for a fake out to force that protect on Montana's side. You know Montana's Cowar X is his win condition. He doesn't want to take any damage. Bleakland misses one of the targets. It's the Incineroar, meaning Incineroar is going to recover up even more HP, and an Astro Barrage would not knock it out on the following turn. Draining Kiss brings Tornadus down to half HP, and Kyle Rx Shadow Rider recovering a lot because Draining Kiss recovers 70 for 75% of the damage dealt instead of the normal 50. Especially too with a grassy terrain recovery, that is gonna be helping you out. Two more turns of Tailwind that you have to be getting through on this. And you know the Astro Barrage doesn't pressure too much into that Incineroar, at least not the most. What I'd be worried about is a Protect and a potential Draining Kiss um, even coming out from Montana's end to be um, dealing some damage if you are worried about something like a resisted hit here. But even just a plus two with the Calyrex, even if you think there's gonna be something a little too passive on the other end, you need other go for another turn of the setup here. The Tornadus as well, if you wanna try and be shutting down Pokemon going on forward, you do have that taunt, but even just a, even just these bleak ones going on forward just seems really safe. Both these trainers have only revealed three Pokemon so far, so gonna have to do a little detective work to try to anticipate who that fourth Pokemon is on each side. The Astro Barrage doesn't hit into Calyrex as Adi decides to protect it. Now Incineroar resisting this hit as a dark type, not enough, it hangs on in the red. Bleakwind Storm, 70% chance to connect, doesn't hit on Calyrex obviously, but finally hits the Incineroar this time and that is going to be significant. It's nice that you don't go down to the Astral Barrage, so this Calyrex doesn't get another Grim Nebu to go to a plus three, but at the same time, the parting shot that was targeted into it was a way to try and be slowing that Pokemon down. You do have just one more turn of this Tailwind getting through at this point, and Clefairy now can bring this friend guard back out. You've gained a good amount of health back with your Calyrex. You still don't feel like you're quite out of the woods when you're staring this down. But any attempt at a double protector anything, I think would be absolutely disastrous. Since you have this special defense boost, you just, I think, have to survive the hit and then go on the offensive to see what can be done beforehand. And if Montana isn't picking up a KO or doing enough on this turn because of that friend guard, well, that's going to be a lot of damage dealt back. Yeah, these, these two Calyrexes, honestly, Sierra, they've been on the field the entire game. And, and somewhat, yes, he got set up with Nasty Bot, but they've just been alternating protects back and forth, just trying to keep themselves safe. Tornadus wants to keep itself safe as well, swapping out into Clefairy. So now both teams having Clefairy Calyrex on the field. But Adi will get a helping hand. Is he going to win the speed tie there? Calyrex Ooh. goes for a Nasty Plot instead of an attack, boosting his special attack to Astronomical. Oh, no levels but here is the astro barrage with the helping hand boost clefairy completely gone but the friend guard was still active so it helped montana's calorex stick around i think that might be okay that you lost your clefairy though because now you get this tornadoes back right. in you have so many special attack boosts the tailwind is gone you needed to make sure the tornado survived past that turn and it didn't have access to protect so friend guard your Calyrex sticks around. You now have a special attack that absolutely nobody wants to be dealing with. And this Tornadus can go ahead, click Tailwind on this turn. And when you're staring down the opposing two Pokemon, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's super effect, it doesn't matter. This Calyrex is about to show a world of pain to Audi's Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not sure how many players have calced, uh, calced their teams to survive a plus four spell tag boosted Astral Barrage from the other side. I think of we're at a plus field. five now. Yeah, oh, right with the, yeah, the Grimnay boost there so uh just absolutely crazy and perfect turn as you mentioned here to swap tornadoes out as tailwind was expiring because you see adi does not have tailwind you're going to be able to set up tailwind and have your speed doubled on your side of the field montana with tailwind meaning cowrick shadow rider on his end will be moving first astro barrage goes into the protect there from fairy but this cowrick is not safe from its opposing side, that is a massive knockout. Adi's down to his last two Pokemon. Montana has played this so 
well, being able to set up this Calyrex for the most success. And look at that, another great grim day boost. It's definitely looking grim if you're Adi in this position. <laughs> Montana's got the speed, he has got the power, and Adi's only got two Pokemon left remaining on his end. It is the Focus Sash or Shifu, so you know it is going to be the Tornadoes has to lay in the bleak windstorm to, to actually knock it out. So that might be one of the things you want to you wanna play for in this spot is uh, playing around a bleak wind miss. What's really rough about the Urshifu is dropping Aqua Jet. I don't know if it would have been enough, but at the same time, you no longer have that priority on your burn as well. If you can just be getting past and avoiding a bleak wind storm and be dealing the amount of damage left, that could be everything. You know that you do have an opportunity to at least survive the one hit. And again, Tornadus isn't the most reliable with the accuracy of its moves. It sucks that with the Clefairy, you can't be kind of redirecting anything since it is spread damage, but you can just literally stay safe. Calyrex with the Astral Barrage yet again. Uh, Clefairy, that's the that's a double protect because Clefairy protected last turn, so he did get that one there. But Urshifu was brought down to one HP. So all Bleak Windstorm needs to do is connect. Thirty percent of the time, that does not happen. Clefairy's gonna make it dramatic. Everybody's worried, but there it goes through. Adi understanding. You see the, the smile on his face, the nod as well. Urshifu's down. Clefairy literally does not have an attacking move either. It's, it's got a lot of heart, that's for sure, and that's about all Go it's got sing. on its that's side. that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're even getting to that point. Astro Rod, plus six coming on through. Yeah, he's going to sing a swan song now in top four. Adi is a great sport, giving a handshake over to Montana. Mott, who's had a slow burn this season, a couple of top 32s to his name. Now he's in the finals here at the Los Angeles Regional Championship.